I recently had to do an appliance repair, but I didn't know how, and so of course I did what every red-blooded American male would do. I went to the internet, and there I found a site that helped me to identify the problem and to order the correct part, and then I found another one with a video that showed me how to make the repair. And I thought, in life, the Bible works a little bit like that. Now, it's, of course, it's far more than a repair manual, but it is the go-to resource for Christians for how we understand truth and how we live our lives. Now, in our series so far, we've seen that we have an essential message, we have an essential mission. But how do we even know what our mission is, what our message is? Well, because God has communicated to us in the Bible. Now, the early Christians did not have the Bible that we have today as we have it. They had the Old Testament. They had some sayings of Jesus. But the New Testament was still being written. But as we look at the early church and we look at their attitude toward the scripture that they did have, that's going to inform us about how to think about and how to use the Bibles that we have. So here's the first point. Scripture was essential to the early church. The apostles anchored their teaching and their ministry in Scripture, and that defined what was most important to them. Now, the fact is everybody has some source of authority that we look to to decide what's right or to decide what's true. A lot of people have never even thought about what their source is. They just absorb it from people around them. But the first Christians had a very clear idea of where their truth came from. It came from the Bible. And there's so many passages in the book of Acts that demonstrate how they treated the Bible, how they used the Bible, what they thought about the Bible. So in Acts chapter 15, for example, it tells us, Paul and Barnabas stayed in Antioch, and they and many others taught and preached the word of the Lord there. So you can see they viewed the scripture as the word of the Lord. And 20 other passages in the book of Acts talk about it as the word of God. And that's why everything they taught and everything that they proclaimed was based on the scriptures. And then in Acts chapter 6, we get another little window into the early church when we see the leaders of the church said this. They said, we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. See, the spiritual leaders of the church had a lot of competing priorities. And when it came down to it, they said, look, along with prayer, the number one priority of our ministry is going to be scripture. And it was so important to them that they refused to get distracted from it. It was essential to the early church. Now here's the second point building on that. The first Christians knew that the scriptures are the word of God. And so they have divine power to change people's lives. These people regarded the Bible as God's actual communication to them. It was God's very words, God's own thoughts. Framed by human authors, of course, but but God's words. And so let me give you an example of that from an early prayer of the first Christians in Acts chapter 4, verse 24 and 25. They said, O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth and the sea and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor David, your servant. And then they quoted Psalm 2 from the Old Testament scriptures. So they acknowledged the human authorship of the psalm, that it was written by King David. But they also acknowledged that there was a a divine authorship behind that. The psalm is God speaking by the Holy Spirit through David, the psalm writer. And one big reason they saw scripture as the word of God is because that's how Jesus treated these writings. Jesus called the Old Testament the word of God. And he consistently quoted it and argued from it and used it in his teaching as if it was God himself speaking. And so if you believe that Jesus has any kind of spiritual authority at all, then this gives this high view of the Bible a lot of weight. Now, as the Word of God, what that means, three things, that the Bible speaks with authority and wisdom from God himself. Now, of course, it has to be understood correctly and and interpreted correctly and not just ripped out of context. But secondly, it means the Bible has timeless relevance, and we would expect it to speak to issues that people face in our own era, which it actually does. And third, it means the Bible has transforming power. For example, look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says that the Word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow, and exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. And so you see, the Bible is not just ink on paper. It has power to cut down to the very depths of our soul, to expose our deepest thoughts and motives, to transform our heart from deep within. 
The apostles then and the early Christians built their foundation on the scriptures because they recognized it to be the powerful, authoritative word of God. So what about us? And so here's my final thing I want to share, that Christians today need to be committed to the same foundation. We have to let it define how we think and dictate how we live. Two things there. First, you need to let the Bible define your ideas about truth and reality. For Christ's followers, our thinking, our opinions should be increasingly shaped by God's word, not just by the culture or politics or some expert opinion, but by the word of God. We see an example of that in Acts chapter 17. The people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica, and they listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. And as a result, many Jews believed, as did many prominent Greek men and women. So you see, for these people, the test of truth was scripture. That's where they turned to discern what ideas were worth believing. And likewise, we need to test everything we hear, everything somebody says, we need to test it against the Bible, not just in the theological realm, but in all of life. And then the second thing about this is that we need to let the Bible dictate how we live every day. So it should be the standard, the ultimate standard for the choices that you make. So I have to ask you today, what dictates how you conduct yourself? What dictates how you make choices in your daily behavior, in your way of life? Does the Bible get the final say? It should. Listen, if Sunday at church is your only interaction with the Bible, you're really missing out. Because it's what you do with the Bible during the rest of the week that ultimately determines the power that it has in your life. So read it. Read it for yourself. Study it. Ponder it. Meditate on it throughout the day. And talk with others about it. And of course, put it into practice in your life.